Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be discussing the Alistair Begg story once again. We have a follow-up and update, and that is Alistair Begg is getting cancelled, and this happened from a prominent Christian radio network. So we're going to talk about that story, potential fallout for ShepCon, which Alistair Begg is slated to speak at, and... We're going to talk about the situation and more. Evangelical Dark Web is the network that broke the story and ultimately is partially responsible for the events that have unfolded since. And unfortunately, Alistair Begg did not repent of his counsel to an elderly woman to attend a gay wedding. Instead, he has doubled down on this sin, on this bad advice that he gave, and on this really divisive position that he's taken. So we're going to talk about this, but first I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. That's our Patreon-like system where you get more benefits uh, for supporting and you get to drive the research direction of Evangelical Dark Web. But for everyone else, you know, no obligation, obviously. Just hit the like and subscribe if you are new. Uh, to the channel or to the podcast. And we have a free newsletter that gives you Christian news in your inbox each and every day. So without further ado, let's kind of do a quick recap on this issue. Now, again, some people in, maybe I got to say it slowly for the people in the back, but, but Jesus did not attend gay weddings. Jesus did not attend drag shows to minister to the the transvestite performers. Jesus did not attend brothels to minister to the prostitutes. So, people need this to be explained to them. And I'm here to do it. But anyway, moving on, it's very obvious that Alistair Begg's position was a compromise on one of the biggest issues threatening the church right now. That's the issue of homosexuality. And going to a gay wedding is a celebration of an abominable union. This cannot be emphasized enough. So we will emphasize it again. So moving on to the story, Alistair Begg doubled down and got canceled from the American Family Radio Network, which is a prominent myth. Uh, radio ministry. I don't know how prominent because I don't listen to Christian radio, but they operate 180 radio stations across the United States. That sounds pretty big. So uh, they had an announcement and just to kind of quantify it before being dropped, Truth For Life ran a 30 minute weekday morning slot on AFR. The radio ministry operates 180 radio stations and they've been dropped. So that is pretty significant. And AFR or AFA, the American Family Association, did reach out to Alistair Begg. They did try to confirm his position, get clarity on his position, see if he'd recant his position, and he doubles down. So the quote from their release was, when it came to attending the ceremony honoring two homosexuals, Vita Gliano, Vita Gliano says AFA strongly disagrees with the pastor who, according to his staff, sees the issue as one of individual conscience. Some believers, for example, would not watch a rated R film, but others will. Now, again, that's a pretty terrible equivalency because what is rated R is completely dependent on what the culture says. There's been a lot of movies even released in the last few years that weren't really rated R uh, that were given an R rating. But I digress. This is a critical issue in the body of Christ right now, Vita Gliano tells AFN. And this is the this is not the only wrong count this is not only wrong the wrong counsel, but is deeply disturbing for Christians who want to hold the line against the cultural impact of the homosexual and transvestite agenda. On a live broadcast, Vita Gliano told said he told the beg he told beg staff he is also a pastor who has taught Jesus showed his approval for man and woman marriage in the book of John when he attended a wedding in Cana. Cana. So the question is, if a Christian goes to a homosexual wedding, are they approving it 
he said, and our answer here is absolutely. So they had a couple other apologists come on and just say that. But the big takeaway here is Walk, Walker Wildman said the goal of the phone with phone call with Begg's staff was to find some sort of reconciliation, but it did not happen, he said. In an attempt to clarify the situation, he and Vita Gliano pressed the issue with several questions until it was clear without any misunderstanding that Begg was standing by his comments from the September podcast. So this isn't something we call saw coming, they say. And, you know, this isn't like some of the others who have drifted. So... It's a bit of a somber note, and I don't blame them for having a somber tone. So just to kind of be clear, this is one of the rare instances in which a big Eva figure is held accountable for their compromised positions. This is a pretty rare occurrence. Now, the best outcome would have been that Alistair Begg repents of a sin that he committed. The second best is he faces the consequences for it in his ministry, and this is that. They made the right move at AFR, and I applaud them for taking that stand. That was probably not an easy stand to take, but it was a simple thing they had to do. So, they did the right thing. And I want to applaud them for that. Now, how much further will this go? And like I said, Alistair Begg, He faced consequences that a lot of people who are worse than him have not faced. Ed Stetzer is still allowed to, you know, go from university, Christian university to Christian university. He's now the dean of theology. And he's gay affirming, by the way. He's the dean of theology at Biola University. So that's messed up, but he's been allowed to fail upwards. People like David Platt have been allowed to fail upwards. And you see a lot of failing upwards in you know, the evangelical industrial complex. You see that a lot. I could name way more names. Russell Moore was terrible at the Gospel Coalition, you know, towards the end. Then he got the the gig at the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. And then he failed at that and went to the Christianity today and is doing what he always did there. So there's a lot of failing upwards and you hate to see it. And then Alistair Begg, of all people, is the one who faces the consequences for it. So it's not like he's the only one. There are other instances where this has happened. But man, would I rather some of these other guys have faced the consequences than Alistair Begg. So let's talk about Shepcon for a moment because Shepcon uh, is coming up. And will Alistair Begg get canceled from Shepcon? Shepcon is uh, kind of a MacArthur bro uh, conference. You see the uh, lineup is... John MacArthur, John Piper, Alistair Begg. And John Piper famously talked about how he's not really going to attack his friends. If his friends mess up, he doesn't really go after them a whole lot. So that's kind of John MacArthur's MO. He has a famous quote about it. And the hypocrisy here, in if they cancel Alistair Begg for one woke comment about attending a gay wedding... Why are they still platforming John Piper, who's a woke pastor? John Piper has been woke for years. He went woke, I I believe it was 2016, he kind of went woke. And then in 2019, 2020, very early on in the days of Evangelical Dark Web, he defends wokeness in the church. He basically says there's no uh, cultural Marxists infiltrating the church at all and affirms much of their arguments and adopts much of their premises. So John Piper's woke. Uh, There's also him on like the whole not defending his wife in the event of a sexual assault or battery. There's also him on guns. He's like, this guy's a liberal. Uh, I'm not a John Piper fan. That and the Christian hedonism thing is pretty cringe to me. Uh, I, I don't get it. I don't get the appeal with John Piper. I just don't. Is he like an old older version of David Platt who's preaching I can't stand or Francis Chan who's preaching I also can't stand is is that who we're dealing with here I I don't I don't know but Alistair Begg if Alistair Begg is canceled over this I'd be shocked it's also a double standard on Shepcon's ministry for not canceling John Piper along with it because John MacArthur was one of the initial signers of the statement of the Dallas statement on the gospel and social justice so John MacArthur took a stand against 
cultural Marxism in 2018. John Piper has not taken a stand. He has adopted much of the woke lingo and he's a woke pastor by all accounts. We've done videos on that. And then for them to cancel Alistair Begg over one moment, little bit of a double standard there. Now, are they going to confront Alistair Begg over this issue? And maybe if there's a Q&A by the audience, it gets confronted, but they, no way otherwise. It's not going to happen. If John Piper's not going to get challenged on wokeness, Alistair Begg is not going to get challenged on, you know, his compromise on the gay wedding issue. So that's my take. That's the update on the story. Be sure to subscribe to Evangelical Dark Web so you don't miss more stories, more Christian news. Have a blessed day. We will catch you on the next one.